Hi, I'm Elsie Hu. This is Bella Love Files. I am so excited to bring you Shamira. She's a licensed clinical social worker with a private practice in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which I love Louisiana, by the way. I miss Louisiana. She specializes in sexuality and relationships. So according to the 2017 census, there's about 110 million singles which blows my mind because right holy cow how does that even like happen i feel for people especially during covid-19 i'm sure there was a lot of people that were very frustrated being single yes. and being at home all alone so we are going to help them out and finding love by having you here so we're going to yes. touch on emotional intelligence so tell me a little bit about that so you're right. There are so many singles right now and they're having a hard time, but this is a good time for singles to start dating. And it's because of emotional intelligence, right? This is because this is a great time to find out someone's emotional intelligence level or their EQ, right? Um, lots of people say that EQ is even more important than IQ and research even says that it's really helpful to see how a person is able to handle stress and how they relate to you while they're under stress, but also how they interpret your stress, right? And so that is a big part of what emotional intelligence is about. It's, it's basically being able um, to manage relationships well. It's all about how well you manage relationships. And I like to talk about EQ in three phases. It's about self-introspection, self-awareness, well, self-introspection, self-regulation, and empathy. These are three important traits that we need to have in order to display emotional intelligence, which is the ability to manage relationships with people. I know we all think we know how to do that though, oh, already, right? I'm sure there's people that, are, <laughs> well, especially now with virtual dating, you know, a lot more people are going onto these apps, doing a lot more virtual dating, which is, I think it's a great thing because it eliminates all the outside noise. So when you oh, go, yeah. you know, usually you go to a bar, you go to a restaurant, or you, you know, you meet her at the park, but now it's just like one-on-one. -on -one. So how can we use what you're saying, you know, emotional intelligence to kind of weed out all the, you know, ones that you really don't want to, you're not connecting with. How do you like zone in on that? How do you zone in on your one? And listen, so zoning in with virtual dating causes lots of issues for people because it's so easy to swipe and click and know I don't like this person's nose. I don't like their eyes. And before you even get to hear a person speak, you've already canceled them out. Right. And so, no, that's not what I mean when I say emotional intelligence. I don't mean being able to determine whether or not you're physically attracted to someone because that's the first thing we see. So when we're talking about dating, right, trying to choose someone who we date, we need to know what our idea of dating looks like. So knowing what your idea of dating is or what your boundaries are and being ready to implement those boundaries, knowing what your hard no's and your easy yeses are, all of that ties into emotional intelligence. And also being able to meet someone where they are. So remember I said it's about being aware, right? So being aware of how you feel when you're talking to someone. Is this person like draining you? Are you like, oh my God, I can't wait for them to shut up, right? Are they, you know, are you having a problem if they're talking about themselves? So one is having a goal. About an ex as well, which is, could be very frustrating as well. Exactly. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what's their, what is their conversation consisting of, right? Is, are they giving you a chance to speak, right? Are they asking you questions? Are they picking up on cues in the room? Like right now you're agreeing with me. You're shaking your head, right? So you're in tune to what I'm saying. If you're on a virtual uh, site and you're looking for someone to date, if they're like this while you're talking, yeah. you know, that might not be the one for you, right? So, you know, going past face value, having conversations. Now, the way we approach dating, that's a whole other thing, right? That's a whole, it takes a whole different type of emotional intelligence to change the way we approach dating. The way we approach dating now is, 
if I like this person, then we're dating. And that means we're probably going places, we're talking to each other. I've probably cut off all my other options because I'm dating this person. And that could be an issue as well. Okay. Well, so let's say that you are zoning into one particular person. You're like, wow, there's a huge connection here. What can somebody use the tools, the methods that you have in order mm-hmm. to get to the next step? What is it that they should be doing after that? So what they should be doing next is engaging with this person, right? Having genuine conversations with them. We really underestimate the value of a conversation. Uh, I am the conversation starter queen. Like I have, that's what I do. I help people to use their mouth, but people aren't really doing that. And we think that there's, you know, we go too deep. If I ask this question, it's going to run them off. I saw a meme on social media that said, you know, on a first date, I need to know about your traumas and your childhood fears and stuff like that. (laughs) And so I really like, I really cackled at that because now while you might not want to ask this on a first date, but when you are being um, curious and you're investing in someone, you're showing that you value the a connection between them. And that is the next step. How are you going to put in value into this person to even allow them to see that you are invested in creating a connection with them? So the very next step is going right in with your conversations, like what saying things about you, asking them very pertinent questions about them. The number one question to ask at this phase is what are your goals for dating? And it's important to know this, right? If we're talking about emotional intelligence, you need to know that you're emotionally available to nurture a relationship. If you just got out of a relationship, this might not be a good time for you to date exclusively. Now we get into talking about different levels of dating and knowing what our goals for dating are. Right. So this is where we start being able to exercise that emotional intelligence. Right. Knowing what is my goal for dating. So you might say, well, right now I'm just looking for some companionship. I'm not looking to be exclusive or committed with anyone. Genuine conversation, companionship, maybe hanging out. If sex is on the table, you can say it. Maybe some casual sex. If if you know you're emotionally intelligent enough or emotionally available enough to just do casual sex, because everybody can't do that. Was well, communication and honesty as well. I know when I just, I was in a relationship, long time relationship, and then I became single. I was very honest with the people that I was dating. It's like, you know what? I just got our relationship. This is my lifestyle. If it's not for you, it's okay. You know, there's nothing to be honest. You, but maybe this is not going to work out. We're not compatible. So that's just another way of, I mean, it's just clearly just being honest and communicating with that other person. So now let's, let's get to like a little bit into how you use emotional intelligence. Now you're dating. Now the topic of sex comes up. You know, sex is very important. Some people say it's not that important. Mm-hmm. What is your thoughts about that in relationship? So if we're talking about now we're dating, we realize that we went through the pre-dating phase. We both have the same goals for dating. We're now exclusive. We've gone, we're courting each other. I don't, do people still say courting? We're courting each other and we're go, we've, you know, gone through all of those phases. And now we've made a decision that is just me, right? We're going to do this, right? We are going to be in a relationship or a dating relationship with each other. And then sex comes up. So sex let me tell you something. Sex does not need to just come up at this point, right? We definitely want to talk about sex and um, when we get ready to have sex. But when you are mapping out your goals for dating, and if you're thinking about going further with a person, you want to know before you say, okay, let's be exclusive. You want to know what their views are on sex before you get to this point, right? So because, because you want to know if you are emotionally available enough for the type of sexual relationship that this person wants to have, or if you are able or willing to collaborate with them. For a lot of people, sex is important. For many others, it's not as important, right? Some people say cleaning this house is more important to me than (laughs) sex. So you need to know the level of importance of sex in a relationship with your potential partner. So you need to determine that you can ask them, you know, What are your views on sex in relationships? 
How often do you like to have sex? What were you taught about sex as a child? This gives you an idea of what their level of uh, sexual education is, where they are sexual, sexually, and most importantly, how committed they will be to your sexual pleasure, which is the most important part. Absolutely. I totally agree. So, you know, when we we talk a little bit more about sex and how, uh, you know, some people don't feel like it's important in their lives or they make it seem like it's in a task. And then you have the other person who is, feels that it's a very important part of their relationship and they should have it in their lives. Is that, does that mean there's a disconnect in being compatible in regards to emotional intelligence? Like something is just not, you know, connecting well. And are these two people actually compatible and will they, you know, long-term be in a relationship? Oh, that is a great question. And this falls back into what your goals are and what your boundaries are. So when you have boundaries, you need to be able to make sure that you implement these boundaries, right? So my boundary might be that I only like being rubbed on my butt at nighttime. And I can tell you that that's my boundary. But if you're rubbing me on my butt in the daytime and I don't say anything about it, then I'm going way past my boundary. And that's not really being emotionally intelligent, right? Because you're not communicating effectively. You're not paying attention to your own cues and you're going past your own boundaries. So in relationships, you need to be able to know that one, there's no such thing as um, couples desiring sex or wanting sex at the same time. You're going to probably be with someone and you're probably going to have a mismatched libido. However, you still need to have the same sexual values. And if you're talking about a person who values sex and you're talking about a person who doesn't value sex as much, that can then you want to make sure that emotional intelligence pops in and you might have to say, well, you know what? This is a really important thing for me. And if this is one of your core values where you need to be able to value sex in the same way as a partner, you need to make the decision that this might not be the relationship for you because sex is huge in many people's relationships. And it's because of the way we've been socialized to view sex and have sex. But if you recognize that you have different sexual values, it is your duty to implement the boundary and maybe pull out of that relationship if you're not able to collaborate. Now, notice I said collaborate. I didn't say compromise because what you don't want to do is compromise on your core values. That's what you don't do. Right. So if this is something that is core, no, we're not compromising. Right. You don't want to be unhappy as well. Uh, Absolutely not. A healthy relationship is that both parties are happy and they grow together and they fall more in love each day. So yes. basically is what we're saying here. Find your emotional intelligence. Be honest in the beginning. Just put it all out there in the beginning. The worst thing in the beginning is that you find out that you're not compatible with that person and then you move on. Because how many single people we have in the U.S.? 110 million single million. people in the U.S.? T- plenty of single people out there. Plenty. Plenty. I didn't even know that. Uh, that. That just blows my mind. So where can people find you for help, number one? Because this is a really hard topic for some people. Some people don't know yeah. where to start. They struggle with these things. So I want to make mm-hmm. sure find you online and you know if you have any books out there that they could read as well so tell us a little bit about that so i i was uh named one of the most influential dating experts of 2019 by dating yes and i created a dating guide that specifically it's called dating in 2019 and beyond so it's basically about how to navigate dating so you can get that on my website on the green couch and you can sign up for my free guide for simple communication if you go to on the green you sign up for the free guide for simple communication and get the dating guide to help you structure how you want to date um I'm also an Amazon number one best-selling book I told you that I'm a conversation starter and I help couples use their mouth the name of my book is use your mouth right um it's a pocket-sized conversation book that has seven types of intimacy to simply increase 
intimacy in and out of the bedroom. This accompanies the sex and relationship conversation starter course because it's hard for people to talk about sex. We talked, we just mentioned like knowing what your sexual values are. Some people have not talked about sex in a long time or maybe with their friends. Some people have sex with their partners, but they don't even talk about sex. Some people want to. I did a poll on my social media on, on my at sexologist Shamira Instagram page yesterday asking people, when's the last time you had a conversation about sex? While there were many people who say yesterday or tonight or just or today or just now, there were so many people who say it's been so long since I talked about sex. So talking about sex, who does that? But that's what I created the cards for to get you out of the habit of not talking about it and to loosen some of the shame around it. But if you really want to reach me, just go to onthegreencouch.com. That is my website. That's where all the things sexologist Shamira is. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us, my fellow love friends. Thank and you for having me. The best and keep helping all those singles people. Please. Yes. All the hundred million, million of them. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.